Hey there, and welcome to the behind the scenes of the Rustic Songbird podcast. I'm Lydia Walker from rusticsongbird.com, and I'm taking you behind the scenes of an interview on the podcast. I hope you enjoy this video, but before we get started, I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel. If you enjoy topics like this, we have new podcast episodes coming out every single week, and the behind the scenes will be here on this YouTube channel. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything. Also, if you enjoy this show, consider becoming a patron and supporting Rustic Songbird on Patreon. You can check out all the details at patreon.com slash rustic songbird. All right, let's get into today's show. My guest on the show today is Jason Roy. He is the lead singer of the band Building 429, and today we're going to talk about the path to success in the music industry and what that looks like from a perspective of faith. And this is something that a lot of people struggle with. Uh, if you want to be successful in the music industry, what does that even look like? So we're going to talk about Jason's story today and also how you can find that success for yourself in music and songwriting. And we're going to share some advice and encouragement for you as well. So Jason, thanks yeah. for agreeing to be on the show. I'm so excited cool. too. We've known each other for a long time. We've never done this. This is going to be great. I know. I've been looking forward to interviewing you for a long time and... Just kept asking until it was a good time, and now is the time. So uh, we're going to talk about your story a little bit. You have been in the music industry for a long time. Yeah. You've been a songwriter for a long time, producing music, touring the world, you know, winning awards with your band, and just really working hard at it. And so it's a really great time, I think, for you to kind of look back and talk about your story of getting there because... It's always interesting how people get to where they are. Right. So, uh, give me a little bit of your perspective. What did that story yeah. look like? Well, for I, you? I feel like that was a compliment, or it was a, like a you're an old guy now. It was one of those. That whole you got thing, a lot of experience. Am I old? So you can take that however so you I'm want. Still, yeah. Well played. <laughs> a lot well of played. Experience. I, you know, I my path has been wild. It's been crazy. I come from nowhere. I didn't know anyone. I had no leads, no connections. Um, Grew up in Texas. Grew up, well, yeah, I, okay, so there's that too. Way back. <laughs> uh, born in Texas, lived in California, lived in, in North Carolina, had family everywhere. I found my way to North Carolina, and in North Carolina, when I was um, uh, in college, I, had, I was going to school, and I had this traumatic thing happen where I was on a basketball court playing basketball, and I woke up in an ambulance, and my face had been shattered, and I, I spent... Basically, all, all this was broken, my nose, my eye, you know, all this stuff. And this, you see my scars good now that I'm older, as she said. But, um, but yeah, like I, and I woke up in the hospital, and the doctor said, you're lucky to be alive. If he'd hit you any other way, you might not be here. Just seems like you should maybe make your life count. Wow. Like, God must have something There's for you. There's a reason you. you're still here. So yeah. do something, right? Mm -hmm. So I spent six weeks with my face disfigured, and then they took me back in and rebroke everything, put it back together. And then I spent six, six and a half, seven weeks healing from that. And those 12 to 13 weeks were the weeks where I, I realized that my passion was the hope that I had, right? And my passion was playing music and seeing people smile and seeing people come alive when I did that. And I, I, before that, I had already dabbled in songwriting. I had already played in a couple of bands. But once I heard, you're lucky to be here, you must have a reason to be alive, maybe you should really make it count, I kind of flipped a switch from uh, maybe I could do that to psycho, I'm going to do this, mm -hmm. and it doesn't matter what anybody tells me. I don't care what they say. I don't care what they think I'm I'm, this is going to happen. Yeah, I'm the not, determination, the, just the wake up call of right. this is what I'm going to do. And and uh, and it's so interesting because literally no one I knew thought that thought it was possible, right? Like I, I had multiple people tell me, Jason, you need to go get your finish your degree. You need to go get a normal job. You need to marry a nice lady. You need to settle down, have a have you know, and that's what you need to do because that's the the right path for that's you. That's the safe path. That's the safe path, yeah. And, and I, um, but I just wouldn't hear it. I couldn't hear it. Because what I realized was I'd be sitting in chemistry uh, in, at, at class. And writing songs. And writing songs. <laughs> I'd be, I, I have a vivid memory of being at NC State and sitting in this whole auditorium 
because I was a, a electrical engineering major. And I remember sitting in this thing, looking down, this lady's giving a lecture, and there I am with my notebook of, I'm supposed to be taking notes, and at the end of the class I look down and I've written this whole poem and like all these lyrics and I have melodies in my head, and I'm like, and that kind of moment was where I was like, this is not what, I, this is what I'm supposed to do, I'm supposed to write this. So, how, how do we get from there to where we are today? Um, uh, uh, the Lord's favor, yeah. right? A lot of determination. And the, uh, it's so funny, I have a friend who says this, he says, favor isn't fair, right? So what he's really saying is, if God is for us, who can be against us, right? So, and I'm a believer, I like, said that, say that up front. But one way or another, I, I had no leads. If you ask me, how are you going to get there? I'd say, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But what I decided to do was take some advice that my father had given me when I was young. He said, son, if you want something in this world, you have to work hard for it. No one's going to give you anything for free, so you've got to work hard. So all I did is I went crazy. I started writing songs like crazy. I started booking my own little concerts and stuff and all these little tiny places. And, and before long, people started kind of going, like I started getting these weird emails from people in Nashville and, and you know, all these connections started happening. And songwriting was my, the key to unlock it all because if I didn't have songs, it wouldn't have mattered. So I was able to write songs. I wrote a bunch of really bad songs to get a couple that were really good. Mm -hmm. and, um, and in the early years, I wrote songs alone. Now as I've grown in wisdom, I've learned that, that for all you young songwriters out there, you may start a song alone, but very few of us are gonna be John Mayers, right? Very few yeah. of us are that guy. Co-writers are a wonderful thing. Co-writers, even if they don't even add a single line, to the song if they just go, oh, that's awesome, right? Yeah. Or, oh, I don't feel that. I'm not sure mm -hmm. I feel Those are the things that today drive me forward as a songwriter. But how it started when I was young was writing by myself. And having that instant feedback, too, from someone right, right there. Saying, because so many people probably sit in their bedrooms and they're writing songs and they're like, is this any good? Right. And they don't know because there's no feedback. No one's talking right. back to them if they're writing it themselves. And, and of course, mom thinks it's great. Of course, of course that they're going to be your biggest fans, probably. Right? You know, your family, your friends are going to say, right. "Oh, great, you wrote a song. That's awesome." But if they're not songwriters, it's like hard to know if it's a good song structure or if it's you know hit material, if it's a formula that's right. going to go on the radio, that kind of thing. It's something you have to learn over time. So it takes time. That co-writing aspect is really, really helpful. Absolutely. To just keep learning the craft and to have that feedback. So if it's not great, you can move to something else. That and I, I feel like I feel like you know I took the long path, but it worked out. I took the ten thousand hours. You've heard that whole theory, yeah. right? But I've since come to know something different as I'm counseling younger people now. That uh, it doesn't have to take that. Yeah, long. you can take ten thousand hours, and some people don't have the iron will that that I had or that some other people have, and about you know eight thousand hours in, they're like, "This is ridiculous. I'm done." And you're robbing the world of the gift that's been given to you. But the only thing you didn't do is you didn't go, hmm, who else has already spent 10,000 hours doing this that I can go sit with and learn from? Yeah, for an hour or for a an, day. Yeah, or because, or, and I know a lot of... Learn from their books. Learn, learn from, from yeah, learn from who they are. Yeah. Learn, and, and, or to go and write. I, I have a client that I've just recently started working with, and this person has made a lot of music, and good music, and has not had any success at radio. And, um, and it's so interesting because I listen to the songs and I go, well, that's what's wrong. This, this song, it sounds good and it's got a good hook and it's mm -hmm. cute, but it's not emotional. I don't feel an emotion of any kind when I listen to the song. So you this, can see what's missing. Right. And this client comes in and we, we spent a week together and when he left, he's like, I get it. Now, I'm not saying that I've written him a hit song, but I have opened his mind and that's the 10,000 hours mm -hmm. that maybe he didn't have. Yeah, so you're able to like impart that to someone right. so that they can take it from that level and then spend 10,000 hours from there, yeah, from there to yeah. get really excellent at their craft. And their exactly. They're going to be better than me if they take it and run with it. That's the hope, right? Yeah, and I think having mentors like that and people that you can ask, people that have done it, mm -hmm. people that have written hit songs or people that have toured or whatever you want to do, you can learn from them and build those skills, but you're not starting from zero. That's exactly right. You're not right. starting from scratch necessarily. So um, what would you say is 
your definition of success at this point in your life? Like, I know that faith is a big part of that. Yeah. And so it's not really about the numbers or like no. the fame and stuff. So what does success really look like for you? Well, it looks different to me than it did when I was younger. Um, a success used to be number one song. Um, if I had a number one song, it validated everything. And I've had a few of those, you know, I've had some, some big songs, but, um, it's interesting you say this, like you hear this whole idea. I don't know if you thought about this a lot, but this idea of generational wealth, right? Like there are some people that come along, they make a ton of money and then they hand it off and the family can run with it because they can put that money in the bank and the interest and it draws and it draws. Yeah. And, and in the same way, I believe that, that we can, there are generational, uh, for me, I can impart this like, kind of like generational wealth, but it's not a wealth of finance. It's a wealth of how I view the world and how, how I chase dreams, how I, and that's what really for me, success today is now looking at my kids and going, what are they doing? How are, how are they doing? Uh, it's not a big house because if you back up in time, the big house phenomenon has only been like the last 20, 30 years where we graduate college and think we should be able to have the house that our parents worked 40 years for. It's ridiculous, right? So, so for me, success is different in that I'm, I'm making a living doing what I love to do. And, 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 uh, and I, I, I can see that my legacy is going to be a lot of people who are now able to run with a gift. And whether I get you know, a lot of credit for that or not is really kind of beside the point. I know. And, um, and for me, the excitement of being able to be in a room and write a song and record something from nothing. That, to me, that, that mainstream people would, may, not, may not agree with me, but I think that's the breath of God every time. Hmm. Because it, it, there's nothing there. Yeah. There's literally nothing Something there. Something out of nothing. Something out of nothing. Yeah. So uh, success for me is to be able to continue to do what I love to do and now to help launch the next generation of young yeah. singers. And so for you, it's legacy. It's legacy. It's what's past your career, what's past even what you can do in your life and in your music. It's how are your kids going to take this and run with it? How right. are people going to remember you? How are people going to learn from you and then do what they're called to do? And how does that pass on well, and, and you, multiply? And, and you find there's a, there's, there's, I love this song. Um, you've heard it. It's um, The Greatest Showman. Um, there's this amazing line and nobody knows it's amazing. Um, but it's the song A Million Dreams, right? You know the song? Uh, Every night I lie in bed, my colors fill my head. A uh, million dreams keeping me awake, right? I think of what the world could be. A million dreams is what it's going to take. This line, brilliant line. A million dreams, not for the world to know my name, but for the world we're going to make. It's brilliant because it's not about them. It's a million dreams for the world we're going to make. And, and I think that, you know, as I get older now, if people don't know my name, but th there's a world that I've made better, like, okay, I'm That's good, good with stuff. that. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm -hmm. By the way, you need to listen to that song. I mean, if you've ever heard it, unbelievable song. But I think that's 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 a great that's a ten thousand hour songwriter who goes. I promise you, the first line was a million dreams for the world to know my name. And then somebody's like, uh uh, no, that's not it. A million dreams for the world we're gonna make. Oh my gosh! Yeah. What? You know, people freak out. I, I freaked out when I heard it the first time. I was like, God, that guy's good, or that girl, whoever that was. And um, so I think that that's as we talk about songwriting, it's just a shift in your mentality and being around people that have done it for a long time mm -hmm. is what's gonna help these young people, you know, take up and run. Yeah, it's interesting how you said your view of success changed from before when you were getting started and you're like, if I only had a number one song and then you get to that point and you're like, okay, I guess this is it. Like, that's cool, but what's next? Like, right. what else is there? What, you know, what am I gonna leave for everyone when all of my songs are written? You know, what right. is gonna be that legacy afterwards? And I think that's something that we can all look towards even if someone's just starting, of what can I do now that can help other people you know, beyond fame and beyond people knowing your name, it's like, how can you help make the world a better place? And that's the core of songwriting. It's not, um, the core of songwriting, what makes a song great is how it makes the listener, does it give, does it, are you able to give words to a listener's feelings? The things that they can't even say that are inside them, as a songwriter, you get to unlock those things. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that that's just so important for people to understand that, that, you can have a bunch of cool phrases and stuff, but if it doesn't emotionally move a person, 
it's a dead issue. You mm -hmm. might as well move on, you know, and I think you're right. I, I had the number one song. It was, it was a blessing and a curse. The first song I ever sent to radio was a smash number one song, right? What was funny was at the top, at the highest of highs, I remember thinking, hmm, I mean, this is cool, but that it? And then guess what happened? The fear creeped in. Like, oh my gosh, am I going to be able to do that again? But I really do believe the best song is the one I haven't written yet. And, and if you don't believe that, you can't be a songwriter. Mm -hmm. You just can't. Yeah, because there's always more songs. It's just part of you. And as you're writing more and more songs, you're going to have more ideas, more thoughts. You're always going to have more ideas. And it doesn't have to line up the same way. It's kind of a right thing, right time mm -hmm. thing with the song. Like, it has to it's, fit what people that. are feeling. Speak that. That's the truth. And so, like, with what's going on in the world right now, the songs that are written and the people that are pouring their hearts into their songs are messages that people need to hear months from now, a right. year from now. And when those songs come out, songwriters will be writing the songs for the next season exactly right. and the next phase. And so there's always going to be room. There's always going to be need for the next thing. Because like you said, people that are listening to the songs want to feel that emotional connection, but they don't know why right. they feel that way. They just say, that song makes me cry or that song changed my life. They don't know it's because of how you crafted the line or whatever, but an overarching theme of this is the one feeling I want people to feel when they hear this song. It's so intentional. It really is. And, and just because a song's not a number one doesn't mean it's not changing somebody's life. That's you so just true. said it. You said it brilliant, brilliantly. You said it's the right song at the right moment, at the right station, at the right second. At the, it, you know, something happens in the world that makes that song yeah. like special but you know there are songs out there by artists that everyone knows that you know artists that have huge huge hit singles um massive number ones but like uh, they're they're specifically like mercy me i could only imagine like oh yeah this like, it's a song it's, everybody's got to hear no there are other songs that they've written that were not number one that were just as unbelievably stellar mm -hmm. and i think that's important for people as songwriters to to remember as well like just because it's not number one doesn't invalidate what you did, you know? And, and when I was younger, I believed that if it wasn't a smash, then it was worthless. No, mm -hmm. it's not true. It's maybe for a different purpose. Right. Like you might have that one smash song and that's what brings people to concerts and that's what gets them to buy your album. And then they listen through the whole album and maybe the last song that you threw in at the last minute or one that almost didn't make the cut, maybe that song changes their life. Right. But it's because of that hit song that drew them in for them to hear that message that came at a different time, in a different co-write, maybe like a song that you started writing and then it changed and it became something else. But then I, I like to think about the timeline of people listening to it and then they hear that line at the time when they need to hear it. Yeah. And it might be a song that you wrote years ago that had to be recorded and produced, put on a CD, then they come to the concert, then they buy the album, then they listen to it, and that's the day that they needed to hear that line. Well, that, How amazing is that's, that? That's Again, that's that breath of heaven on it, right? It's like somehow, some way, and there are secular songs that the the writer doesn't even know it, but God did something there. And I just yeah. believe it, you know. And so, uh, for me, I think that if you turn back the hands of time, and you go, okay, so let's talk about the first kind of music that was popular in the in the in the world, whatever that might have been. You, we start before we even bring in melody, and before we bring in lyric. We go to symphonic music, right? We, we, we're Sounds. listening. Yeah, set, right. Mm -hmm. There's a reason why, for some reason, uh, Mozart, you know, whatever, like you hear it and you're like, oh, what? Why, why do I feel this way suddenly? Mm -hmm. And if you can capture that with lyric and melody in pop music, now you're on to something. Yeah, yeah, because there's, there's sounds, there's tones and frequencies that literally our bodies will respond to with right. that emotional response or reaction and we don't even know why so as a songwriter we can study those things we can know that if it's in a certain time signature or in a certain key or even a certain tone of voice as we sing and deliver it it can deliver that emotion to the listener even in different languages you can hear a song right. in a language you don't understand but if it conveys the emotion then people just weep that's right. And they don't even know what the words mean, but they get the emotion. So it's yeah. just amazing how powerful sure. music can be. I totally agree with that. I'm yeah. excited about, at this age, to still be excited about songwriting after I've yeah. done as much as I have. I mean, I mean, my catalog is just stock full of songs, but 
I'm, like today when we're done here. You're gonna write a song. I'm gonna be on, <laughs> I'm gonna be on a call with a guy in Nashville writing a song. So, yeah. and it's just obviously. who you are. I think yeah. that's something that I've heard several times lately of people saying that if you're a songwriter, you're going to write songs, and you put it out there, and then you write another one, and you don't see the results of that for a while usually, but you're already writing more songs, and that's it's right. just what you do and who you are and I heard somebody recently say show me your calendar and let me see if you're a songwriter like do you block off time to write songs right. are you spending your time writing songs perfecting your craft actually doing it or are you just thinking about it and putting it off that's and so right. I think that's a really big part of it is being disciplined enough Come on, to write to create and then keep creating because that's who you are yeah and and to to be try I've gone through seasons as, as a as a producer, as a writer, whatever, I've been through seasons where, um, where the well was dry, but I realized that, in, like, you have this epiphany where you're like, huh, I haven't read any good books lately, or I haven't even been listening to music, you know, mm -hmm. because music creates more music, right? It just does. It's just this weird thing where you hear something you're like, oh, that's cool. I'm gonna write. I should find a way to take and, you know, it's just the way it works, mm -hmm. and so. If you're feeling uninspired, then you need to you need to look up the, the bestseller list of books, and and it can be any kind of thing. But yeah. just sit and read, and and just fill your fill yourself with knowledge. I mean, for me, it's that book, that Bible right there. It's got a lot of stuff in it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, keeping notes and 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 all that kind of stuff. When I feel uninspired, I I definitely know. I'm like, oh man, I've been working, I've been trying to force out something for a while now. It's not happening. Probably the reason I'm trying to, it's not happening is because I'm empty right now. So like you need to let it flow, but you have to have that input before it sparks those ideas. The discipline for, for actually creating, but the also the dis discipline of, of actually being filled, right? Mm -hmm. Those two things kind of work side by side because you never want to work walk into a writing situation fearful. Right. right? You don't want to walk into a writing situation going, oh, I don't... I mean, I've written some good songs in those seasons, but... I think that um, by and large, walking into a writing situation with great confidence is is helpful. Um, and I, I'd say this too. You know, we talked about collaboration, but um, I've definitely come to a place in, in in my career as well where there are people who can take a phrase that, and I, I think over time I've kind of become one of those people. But when I was young, I this is thought, this is the whole idea, this is what I this is what I wanted to say. And then you become like this iron box in a writing room. You're like, no, no, that's not it. No, I like it the way it is. No, that, that. Well, you're, you're wasting the opportunity you have, right? By sitting in a room and just being a lump on a, on a you know, yeah. on, on a log, like, and, and saying, no, no, it's perfect the way it is. Well, if it's perfect the way that it is, good luck with that, kid. Because I've been in those rooms. Mm -hmm. But the truth is, is that, you know, a great idea, that collaboration, and, and being a songwriter is check this out when you walk into a room with a song that you think is completely done you've already recorded it you've already got it on your phone it's not going to hurt you to actually completely tear it apart mm -hmm. and rework it from the ground up you yeah. might get something that's a thousand times better and if you don't which is very rare that you don't you can always go back to the yeah, you got the recording version. yeah like just go back there man mm -hmm. uh apple command z like you're fine <laughs> yeah um, but also, I just think also songs are only great when there's when it's a great idea, mm. right? So like when when you're writing a song and you get to the chorus and you're like, now what am I what do I even want to say? Hmm. Like, you really need to start with like for me, I've found and, and that's where I bring collaboration and people help me get there. Mm -hmm. But when I'm trying to write a song, it starts with this thought, this this thought. And if I walk in a room and I say, man, I've been thinking about this one thing. And like this is a phrase that caught me, and and everybody in the room goes, "Ooh, that's a good phrase." Or they go, mm, "Yeah, not so much." Like the song is only as good as the idea is, right? Mm -hmm. You watch a great movie, you watch a movie, and if the movie is kind of like a predictable, there it is, same old movie. Yeah. Rotten Tomatoes is going to give some bad scores. And the same thing for us as songwriters. Like we need to be not writing cliches. We need to be taking, listening to all the things happening in the world, and somebody throws a turn of phrase. Oh, mm -hmm. wow! I haven't heard that before and put that in a song. Yeah, so saying something in a new way, right. or a new combination of things that people can relate to but hasn't been done exactly that way, mm -hmm. if you can put your own spin on it or your own uh, twist, like you said, kind of surprise the listener to where it's not predictable. 
So what encouragement would you give to new songwriters who are wanting to put their music out there, uh, maybe they're wanting to pitch their songs to artists to sing, or they're writing for a specific style, and they want it to be that great quality. They want it to be top-notch where they could pitch it to radio or pitch it to an artist. Uh, mm -hmm. What encouragement would you give for someone who's working towards that? Find somebody who's already been there. Uh, it's We're not, uh, you know, people who have already been there, we're not arrogant jerks. I mean, like, we're, we, we've all started at, in nowhere, right? I mean, some, some people hit the American Idol lottery, congratulations. That's not what most musicians did to end up where they are. And, which is a great point. That is a good point. It's a great point. Because this is a new phenomenon and it's not real. Uh, that's a miraculous thing that happens for one person out of how many people in America? Like, right, out yeah, of like, millions of people that just have to work hard. 600 million people in America. <laughs> one, there's one American Idol. and. Not to break anybody's heart, but it's probably not you. Like, you know, and if it is you, congrats. But most of us have to work at our craft, right? We just have to work hard at it. And, um, and, and I think that the people that go before you are kind. They're, they're kind people. Go talk to somebody who knows what they're doing. And then, this is important. If somebody says, you know what? I've got a lot of people I'm working with. I, look, let's do a $500 demo. Come on over. We'll see what we can do. You are an absolute fool if you don't figure out how, if, if you had told me as a kid, if somebody would come in and say, hey Jason, listen, there's this writer in Nashville, you're 18, uh, you want to be a songwriter, right? Yeah, I want to be a songwriter. Well, you know, he, he likes what you're doing, he's interested in what you're doing. It, he says, 500 bucks, come up, spend some time with him, and, uh, and you know, get to hang out, be in the studio, learn the craft. I would have instantly been like, I'm figuring this out. I, I, if I got a call, I'm calling my mama. I don't care. I'm figuring it out, right? Like, I want to figure it out because nothing comes without investment of time or finance. Yeah. You have to sometimes invest. Both. Sometimes both. You know, we both right. know. And and I would just say to those people out there, like, there is no, if there's a wall in front of you, knock it down. That's it. If there's a wall in front of you, knock it down. And if you run into a wall and you're like, I don't want to knock this wall down. You're not a songwriter. You're not. You have to be willing to keep going forward, to keep trying, keep pressing forward. You just got to keep going and keep going. Even, uh, you know, it's part of my story, but like, you know, I was even kicked out of my own house because my parents were like, we don't understand this music thing, so you can move out. Did that stop me? No, it just absolutely solidified Got to me. Got into the fire. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> go ahead. Okay. Wait and see. Here it comes. Yeah. And again, that's that kind of um, just mentality you have to have. I mean, you, there's nobody that's a professional athlete that didn't kill themselves to get there. There's very few people who just wake up and it just happens for them. Yeah. So we got to work hard. Yeah, and I think when people are working hard and they've got their, their head down, they're just you know grinding every day, doing something towards their music every day, it's hard to see those results because they are incremental. It's just right. like building blocks. It's like stacking bricks. Every single day you show up, you write a song, you Come show on. up, you do something, and it's not glamorous this whole mm -hmm. time. And then it's kind of hilarious to me to see someone you know, do really well and then people say, well, where'd they come from? They came from all That's of this right. hard work and then you know, maybe a whole team of people that are working hard to get them to that point. That's right. And so it takes a lot to I, get to that point. It doesn't happen overnight. I love, I love, um, I remember I was living in Fayetteville, North Carolina years ago, and I went over to a friend of mine's house. They were from Australia, and they they just moved in, and, and my friend was like, hey, I went to this coffee shop just the other day, and there's this guy in there playing, and he was really good, but there was like you know, seven people, and and uh, you know, he's like doing a whole run of coffee house shows, but I bought a CD, I think he bought it for five bucks, right? He's like, hey, check this out, and he put it on, and I started listening, I was like, hmm pretty good and it was John Mayer playing coffee house five seven people and no one knew no one cared my friend was like yeah he's pretty good so I thought I'd help him get his CD you know like and now you know the guy just you can just tell some people want it and I'll tell you this too as now as now a label owner uh, and as a person who helps uh, I do consulting and stuff with people who are doing live shows. 
um, I, I'm not interested in somebody who, um, I'm just not interested at all in somebody who's like, wants, wants it handed to them. Yeah. I'm, That's not I'm how it works. unbelievably interested in a person who says, whether you help me or not, I'm doing this. Mm-hmm. And, um, but if you're going to help me, I'm ready to listen. Yeah. If you mean you, teachable. I, I'm teachable. Yeah. But whether you help me or not, I'm doing this. Oh, wow. That's interesting. I want to talk to you for yeah. a little bit. That's you know? not normal. That's not <laughs> normal. Exception. It's the exception to the rule, right? So um, that that's just so important for a young, young artist to understand. Like, you have to desire to, to do it on your own regardless. And, and if you don't have the willpower to do that, then probably... You need to do what my mom told me to do, be an electrical engineer, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Choose the safe route, right? That's if you it. don't want to know the un- and like go into the unknown of, you know, possibly working hard at something and then it not working out. You know? right. But I do think that if you keep working at it and you keep fine tuning and you- something's going to work eventually and so it's just a matter of time. It's it's the it's the man in the arena quote, Teddy Roosevelt. That's it. But that, I don't know the whole thing, but look it up. It's amazing. And that is what you have to be as a songwriter or artist. Yeah, keep showing up. That's it. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, thanks for sharing your story and kind of some encouragement and inspiration for songwriters. Tell me what you're up to now and what you're working towards with your music at this point. Yeah, well, uh, I'm always the, the building 429 thing. I'm, I'm writing a Christmas single today and uh, working on the new project that comes out, comes out in January. So that's what's happening there. I'm producing... And is that the 10th album? Yeah. With Building 429? That's huge. It's a lot. Congratulations. It's a lot. Um, but uh, I'm doing that, and I'm also... So we still tour. So, well, you know, there's been some interesting time here. Yeah, this year's been different, but... Yeah. Still moving forward. Still moving forward. With a new record. Um, I'm actually... Uh, I've, I've done uh, recently I did a score for a film which was a lot of fun okay. and I'm working with um, a bunch a bunch of artists producing music for them which by the way I'm loving because um, what I found is that my my as a singer I had gotten used to what I'm capable of but as a writer I, it doesn't matter what I'm capable of. Yeah. I'm writing for other people's capabilities, mm-hmm. and it makes it a whole, whole lot of fun to work. And there's with other no people. ceiling. It's there's, not capped out at your voice or your skill level I or your anything. time. It's right. whatever they take and run with. Totally. So that's, that's so been cool. a blast. Obviously, I'm working a lot on um, my daughter's music. Her name's Haven Madison, and she's released her second single, and she's we're working on a third, and she's she's one to watch out for. I'm helping my son Avery. Uh, he's producing a lot of music now uh, as well um, and and in between all that I own a label that I'm kind of running as well so just kind of got my my hand in a lot of different places and uh, the schedule is always really really full um, but I'm grateful for it and my wife and I now we're this year will be 20 years that we've been married and awesome. and we have teenagers and we've been at home together uh, for months, <laughs> for months, and they still like me after I've been gone for so long. Yeah. So, um, and you know, I'll say this too: like, there's a lot of uncertainty in the world. Um, and for me, what it comes down to, and it becomes very, very simple for me, is that I, I'm not in control, right? Yeah. I cannot control everything, all the circumstances. But I can control the way that I react to the circumstances that surround me. Right. And I, my family, we come to, down to the simple statement is God God and the answer to that is God is God no matter who's in charge of our country no matter who's you know no matter whether we have money whether we don't have money whether we have number one songs or we have nothing songs God is still God and we have never gone without we've always been provided for he's the God of provision so in these uncertain times uh, my encouragement to people out there is no matter even even the election right like Guess what's going to happen the day after the election for me? You know what's going to happen? I'm going to get up, I'm going to have my coffee, I'm going to walk in the studio, I'm going to go to work. I'm going to write a song. Well, I'll write a song, <laughs> but but I'm, if Joe Biden is elected, congrats, moving on. It, 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 honestly, for me, like I serve the Lord, and all that mess out there, like whatever, cool. Hey, if I cast a vote and the other person wins, okay, so what? Moving on. Like, because... I think that these days, I think that we all feel like we have to tell the world what we think. 
Um, I, we put that pressure on ourselves to be in control or we right. try to be in control, but we have realized that I feel like on a big scale this year that we're not in fact in control of our own lives and that God is ultimately in control no matter what and we can always trust in that. Speaking of songwriting, you don't have to tell the world what you think through your songwriting. You need to listen to the world and share the beauty of it that they can't even see. Yes. Right? So. I just want to encourage people out there, whatever you're going through, whatever's going on in your life, man, God is God. Listen to the world. Let it feed the songs and walk with confidence because uh, no one can stand against what the Lord is going to do. Thank you so much. Yeah. That's awesome. Real quick, I wanna say a big thank you for watching this behind the episode here on the YouTube channel. And I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel for more topics like this coming soon. We have new episodes of the podcast every single week and share the behind the scenes right here on YouTube. So hit that subscribe button so you don't miss anything. Also, if you enjoy this podcast and want to show your support, consider joining our Patreon community to support us on a monthly basis. You can check out all the details at patreon.com slash rustic songbird. That's patreon.com slash rustic songbird to become a patron today. Thanks again for watching and make sure to subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.